All right, Andy Broadway, and I'm here at the number one networking event here in Las Vegas, and I'm here with... Dylan Gonzalez. So I heard you talking earlier. You dropped a whole bunch of great content. I pulled you out of another room that you were just dropping gold with everyone that was listening. Tell me, where? what's your number one success tip you can give to someone? Ooh, my number one success tip. All right, so my number one success tip actually is a quote from somebody who I would definitely consider a mentor of mine, Walt Disney. And it's, if you dream it, you can do it. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. I was at uh, Disney World a couple of years ago, and I saw that quote on the side of yeah. one of the buildings, and it was just, you're, you're right. Yeah, you really can do it. You know, yeah. like, it's so beautiful. And Disney, when people ask me, like, you know, who do you kind of shape your brand after, there's always three initial people who come to mind, and it's Walt Disney, Oprah, and then Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Right. So, yeah, there's just so much from each of them that I could learn and honestly there were so many similarities between them as well and I think that's what really resonated for me was I could really see myself in them and just the way that they spoke right the way that they utilize language I wanted to be able to communicate with people like that right. so yeah so in the personal development field because I'm all about personal development and I think you are too what are some of your favorite books in the personal development Ooh, okay, okay. So one of my favorite books, it's actually a trilogy, and it's called Conversations with God. Um, it, yeah, uh, Neil Donald Walsh, I believe, is the author. Uh, book two is my personal favorite, but just because it really, like, that was where the paradigm shift happened for me was when I read book two, but Conversations with God je definitely, hands down, changed my life, just perspective change, right? Um, and then I would say another one is the subtle art of not giving a fuck. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because again, it was just one of those things that it helped me to really tap into some of the personal hurdles that I was dealing with because there was so much I could relate to. And I was just like, oh wow, I'm getting like checked, I'm getting called out right now. And to have that experience is something that I think is really difficult for people sometimes, especially when you become very comfortable in like kind of who you are, you know, who you believe yourself to be. So to get to have those kind of, um, I guess, exchanges through reading and through like just literature period is something that I really, really crave. So that's another one. Um, man, I guess, honestly, another book that changed my life was the Bible, the Old and New Testament. I studied that as literature as well. and. That's really, honestly, when I studied it as literature is when I started getting a better understanding of it as a religious text even. And again, just how it could help me iron out my personal beliefs. Yeah. So what was one of your beginning struggles that you struggled with in developing your career? Like what was that thing that you struggled with? And of course you've overcome it, but what was it? All right, so full transparency. I'd say one of the things that I really struggled with was depression, actually. And that can be one of those things that it's interesting to talk about today, right? Because sometimes I think the word just gets thrown around a lot. Like, oh, I'm depressed. And a lot of people, they don't actually really fully understand the experience of what like going through depression is. And it's like a demon that kind of like, hangs and latches itself onto you and you go through these mental hurdles of trying to understand like why you're here and what's the point in participating and why should I you know kind of give my all to this life when I don't feel like life is really going to give that back to me and you get to this point where you really just don't want to participate you don't want to do anything and, and sometimes you even get to a space where you feel like the world is so corrupt, like you don't even, it doesn't even deserve you in all your light, right? And you just have this really pessimistic outlook that essentially causes you to make self-sabotaging decisions because you're just continuing to be kind of trapped in your own darkness. So I would say that overcoming depression is definitely one of the first like hurdles I really had to get over for sure. So we'll follow up on that one because everyone's curious, how did you overcome that? What was your breakthrough? What was that moment? You know, I had a very, uh, I'll say like ugly awakening, um, but it was definitely just getting back to my roots and finding like Christ, honestly, like that's what helped me. And 
Uh, sometimes it can get a little like weird talking about that just because I, I truly do understand like the power behind what that is and I understand the culture that that is today when I like make that kind of proclamation but that really is what changed my life it was just committing my life to Christ and like finding God and just trusting the journey that he ultimately had me on because the second that I just chose to believe in this higher power because I had gotten to know it so well and the second that I just chose to instill belief in like what I could do based off of what was instilled in me through this source is the second that I started getting to experience life differently. And I started becoming grateful. I would say um, also acquiring an attitude of gratitude is also what changed that and helped me overcome that. My tip is that you rewind this about three minutes and listen to what she just said again. <laughs> For sure, that was some good stuff. I heard you talking about the power of mentorship in the other room. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. You know, mentorship is so amazing because it was just like one of the panelists was saying, you have to learn from your mistakes, but you also have to learn from others and you have to be willing to like seek guidance. And sometimes I think it's just in our human nature that we kind of want to be stubborn and just follow our own path of life, right? But really there are so many people who have success in areas that we're seeking to have success in. And I was just saying that at the end of the day, when you're seeking mentorship, you just have to figure out what your values are and what it is that you're looking out of the relation looking for out of the relationship. And then just being patient in the development of that and then seeing where things go. I was telling the ladies in the room, I didn't necessarily go into like my mentorships with this formal like understanding of it being a mentorship like I just went seeking guidance and then the next thing I know we started to create real relationships and then they started to be able to give me real honest substance filled advice and then I started to get to process all of that information and decide how I was going to apply it to me and my life and my business. So would you agree that when you work with mentors that not every mentor can give you aspects of every area of your life, that that mentor that you're mentoring gives you great mentorship in that one specific area. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely say that, you know, at the end of the day, there's going to be all types of people in all different kinds of fields. And I say that everything exists because there's something for everyone. And we're all very, very, very unique, one-of-a-kind existences. So we have to understand, again, what it is that we're looking for out of each of our relationships with these mentors, because at the end of the day, you can't necessarily idolize somebody. And um, Dylan, Barton, he was actually saying something very similarly. He was like, you know, you can look up to these people, but you don't necessarily want to idolize people because you'll get this, you'll create an image of them in your head for what you think they are. And then the next thing you know, you actually get closer and closer and that image kind of starts to tear down and you start to experience disappointment and it's really just from your own expectations that you created in your head so sometimes we have to take ourselves or take a step back a bit and not put so much pressure on somebody in that way and again just know exactly what it is that we look up to them for and what our intention is for what we want to get out of that relationship because I do believe that it's very healthy to have multiple people of multiple you know successes uh, in a mentorship position for sure so let's transition this conversation so much of great gold and in there but you've got some exciting projects that you're working on so share a couple of what those are. You know, one of the things that I'm like really passionate about is fashion. Yeah. So that's kind of why I like to come out in my own little original style and do my thing, represent my cultures. Right. Um, so one of the things that I feel like is missing in the fashion space is just opportunity for designers and for creatives. So my sister and I decided that we were going to kind of fuse music and fashion, which are two of our passions, and create what we're calling the Flex City Fashion Jam. So it's gonna be out here in Vegas. We call it Flex City because I'm kind of trying to rebrand Sin City just a little bit. Yeah, you know, and I personally feel like 
people come here to flex and I do that for a living so why not teach them a few things you know and and then again just make it fun and and uh, give people permission to get creative and to explore in their style and to explore in their creativity and in perhaps a new way that they may have never even realized they had a passion for just because they were introduced in a way that was digestible for them so what we're hoping to do is to again create opportunities to fuse uh, music and fashion and honestly just create a legendary kind of event. We want to be able to go city to city. We want to see what the different local designers of these different major cities have and then hopefully make it an international affair and then bring it back home to Vegas for a residency. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. That sounds really, really fun. I want to make some introductions for you in that area too. Uh, in with the fashion area, um, super cool. Now you mentioned about uh, uh, basketball a little yes. bit, right? So share a little bit about that. Yes, honestly, there's so many cool things coming up in basketball, but one of the things that I just got to specifically participate in was the Black Top Street Ball Festival up in Newark, New Jersey. It was amazing. It's all the original and one front office players, everybody coming back together to create a professional street ball league and yeah so I'm currently in negotiations for becoming a team owner I really want to help take the team that's going to be out here in Vegas to a whole nother level I want to really introduce them to the community blacktop and street ball it really doesn't get the credit that it deserves like people they don't really understand how basketball was shaped and, and even music honestly as well was shaped through and one mixtapes and right. a lot of these guys unfortunately they don't get to um you know be as financially prosperous as a lot of other professional athletes because again there just isn't a space that exists for them to do that so at blacktop we're hoping to change that and then hopefully also create some opportunities for women. I definitely have plans to create a new professional women's league as well, not just to participate in, but to create more generous opportunities for women. Like a lot of people, they have this misunderstanding because they're misinformed about what kind of opportunities really exist for women professionally, especially in basketball. And the WNBA, as much respect as I have for them for what they've become, they're not exactly an ideal situation for any professional athlete to be in. Like, we're not just talking women, right? We're just talking for any professional athlete. This situation would be way less than ideal, right? Like, that might even be generous to put it that way. So, for me, I just thought to myself, as a player, as somebody who's for the players, as somebody who wants to see people get the opportunities that they truly, truly deserve, honestly, for all of the work that they put in, for the commitment that they make, because this is a lifestyle, right. you know what I mean? So I want to be able to come in and help, you know, teach people how to garden. That's what I say, like teach them how to fish, like that metaphor. Yeah. I really want to teach them how to be able to like capitalize, but then also like give them a platform where they can showcase their skills. Right. So that's what I'm looking forward to on both the, the blacktop side of things and the professional league with women as well. Well, that's awesome. It sounds like you got some uh, fingers into some really cool projects. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. And also, you know, Free Britney Griner and Save the Soil. Those are two movements that I'm definitely on board with. Uh, you know, it, it can get, like, difficult, you know, with that movement with Free Britney Griner. Because, again, obviously, we're talking about somebody who, you know, violated laws and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I know what side of the fence I stand on. I played with her in one of the first ever... Um, it was a professional mixed gender league, global mixed gender basketball for Master P. And we played on the same team together and we actually played against each other a little bit just coming up in the ranks and in college. So this is a person who's an amazing individual, right? Like this is not a criminal at all. So all we can do as people who support Brittany is continue to just like put that message out there and, and fight for her and then save the soil. That's actually a movement that I got into with the Isha Foundation and Sadhguru. Um, um, who honestly started putting me on to like how devastating it is that the soil is dying because the soil is its own living organism, its own living system. And because of the degradation of soil, predominantly due to human activities, we're actually experiencing malnutrition on levels and degrees that we never have in times past. It takes eight and a half oranges to get the same value nutritionally as one orange back in like the 60s. Right, And when you really think about it, I believe the statistic was about 
80%, if not 85% of life on earth depends on soil. So again, even just down from what's growing out of the soil that we have to depend on, a lot of people don't realize, again, like how the nutrients actually transition. And the thing that shocked me the most and scared me the most and really got me on board was actually the fact that Sadhguru was telling me when I got to have a video call with him that he's projecting a major mental health like pandemic and crisis to come as a result of this because again the nutrition that we either have or, or don't have is going to significantly affect our mental health right. and so when we're all just eating a bunch of junk essentially and things that are low in nutritional value we're going to start to see that decline and I said to him oh my gosh like Sadhguru if we haven't already experienced a mental health pandemic like I'm scared right so I wanted to hop on that movement and he said the first thing is just talking about it so hashtag save the soil that's great. Yeah. Fantastic interview. So where do we find more information about you, follow you, Instagram, TikTok, website, all that? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, Dylan.Gonzalez, D-Y-L-A-N dot G O N. Excuse me, Z-A-L-E-Z. -E um, same with TikTok, Dylan Gonzalez, Twitter, Dylan Gonzalez. So pretty much any of the platforms you can find me. Uh, but I would say stay tuned for my website, DylanGonzalez.com. That will definitely be a hub and a source for all things Dylan.